A very good afternoon everyone, uh, Jordan here with a New York session video. Today is the 15th of June 2022. Before I start as always, I would like to highlight that this is not financial advice, this is just the way that I see the markets and I would like to share with all of you. I did not make um, a London session video this morning. Um, I did share a trade ID on EURUSD this morning. I honestly was pretty convinced um, about the trade. Um, I had a lot of faith in the trade. Unfortunately, um, I did call out to, to get out of the trade and we were break, uh, we were trading at break even. Um, yeah, I mean, we can all see what uh, what, what happened to the Euro USD trade. Um, it did go to our take profit level. And so that was a 1 to 3.5 risk to reward trade, um, which was great. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I, I actually called out uh, to get out of the trade. And there are several reasons for that. Um, but first of all, I want to make clear why I was looking for short opportunities on Euro USD. Yeah. Something very important that I noticed yesterday and that was a very strong Euro. Yeah. As I said already in my videos, fundamentally there is not really a reason why Euro should be strong or at least not so strong compared to other currency pairs. Yeah. Um, but Euro was basically seeking for liquidity. Yeah, Euro was seeking for liquidity and we could see that on all Euro uh, currency pairs. So what happened this morning during the, the London session, we created equal highs, we traded lower, imbalance fill, we traded higher and we cleared the liquidity that was up here. And we, created, uh, we cleared the liquidity that was up here. So then we could see and we know once we clear liquidity that we can reverse. And if you look at now all other currency pairs, uh, Euro GBP, let me go to the four hour, for example. If I go to the four hour, then what we can see is that we, what did we do? We cleared liquidity, yeah. Uh, liquidity from the 29th of September, 2021. If I go to Euro Canadian, exactly the same happened. Yeah. Liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. We cleared the liquidity, we traded lower. Euro Swissy, exactly the same, yeah, we had um, we had some um, downwards trend line. Yeah, we seek the liquidity now trading lower. Euro GPY, exactly the same. We trade significantly higher yesterday, but then we could see uh, during uh, the session that we were already trading lower. Euro AUD, exactly the same. What happened? We had uh, we had liquidity over here. We had liquidity over here. Liquidity over here. We ran liquidity, traded lower. Euro NZD, exactly the same. Liquidity here liquidity over here, run liquidity, trading lower. So I, when, when I saw that Euro was, um, that the Euro seeked actually all the liquidity, then I was expecting a reversal. So that was one of the, the my, my main confirmations. And then there was another confirmation uh, that I would like to show you, and that's um, the relative strength analysis. Yeah. If I go now to GBP USD, for example, if I go to uh, GBP USD, yeah, I go to GBP USD, and this is my GBP USD chart. So I will, um, give the this one candlesticks as well. So this is GBP USD and GBP USD. This is my Euro USD trade. And I'm just gonna remove um, all the all the paintings. Yeah. So if I go now to the five minute time frame, if I go now to the five minute time frame, yeah, I will put this one a bit lower. Um, wait, I will delete this one. Sorry, guys. Uh, but this is something really, really important for you um, to see. I really want you guys to be familiar. Uh, with the way that I see the market, yeah, the way that I see the market, and this is something very, very important. If I, I have GBP USD with the green and red candlesticks, I have um, Euro USD with my, um, as usual, blue and black candlesticks. So what happened? Yeah, so what happened this morning? We could see the spike, yeah, the spike on Euro USD. Yeah, this is the Euro spike that caused um, the liquidity, the seeking for liquidity of all other Euro currency pairs. And now we traded lower. Now we traded lower. Yeah, we traded lower. But what happened then? Let me delete. Yeah, I will leave this. So we traded lower, but Euro USD, uh, sorry, GBP USD traded higher. So this was my sign of weakness of Euro. And then I was, okay, cool, we are, and if you go to the dollar chart, I'm not going to show the dollar chart, but because I, I want you guys to do it yourself. If you go to the dollar index, then you can see that we were trading yeah, in yesterday's London opening session price. And we were trading in that area, so that's why I was actually looking for a, for a kind of a reversal uh, bullish momentum on dollar. 
bullish momentum on dollar means bearish momentum on euro usd gbp usd but we didn't get the bearish momentum on gbp usd we were trading higher however euro usd was trading lower so i knew okay there is a lot of weakness there is a lot of weakness in euro usd once i saw we could see here that order block he had lost sell to buy we, uh, it was respected here, we trade higher, but then we trade lower, and then I said, okay guys, let's place a limit. So we placed limit over here. Um, was very an aggressive entry, okay? Uh, the safe entry would have been here, but we've missed already lots of trades uh, the last couple of weeks um, because we were maybe not aggressive enough. Uh, you like, I read, you know, guys, I really do like my uh, conservative approach, but sometimes you really need to, um, to, yeah, to react actively. Uh, so that's what I did now. So we went in a trade, yeah, we traded a bit higher, we then traded lower, but again, uh, I, I still had a lot of confidence in the trade because what happened here is that we traded a high, we traded lower. However, GBP was again trading higher. Yeah, so that was an, another confirmation for me that euro was really weak. But what happened here is that we were consolidating. Yeah, we were consolidating the whole time, and I just didn't like what I was seeing. Also, GBP was going higher and higher and higher. So this is where I actually said, okay, let's go out of the trade. Um, I'm not longer interested in Euro USD. Also, if you look at the dollar index um, chart, and you will see that we on the five minutes that we were actually uh, creating equal lows. And I explained that earlier in my in other videos. Whenever I see that my trade is not going in my direction immediately, and we are on the other hand creating liquidity that probably will be seeked in a later phase, then I just get out of the uh, get out of the trades. Um, but yeah, we can see the follow through. Uh, we, we, we did trade lower. Uh, we did hate to take profit. But this is something that I want uh, you guys to, to, to look at as well. Uh, the, the relative strength analysis. I don't believe in RSI. I don't believe in stochastics. Yeah, I just compare uh, the pure price action of uh, several currency pairs to see which one is the, is the strongest and which one is the weakest. Um, okay, we do have FOMC meeting. A bit later on, we have uh, FOMC meetings later on. So uh, let me go to the to the dollar index now. Yeah, uh, this this uh, this uh, these are here the equal lows that I was talking about. Yeah, when I saw this for uh, this forming, I was like, okay, uh, let's get out. Um, one hour time frame, uh, just a very quick one, and we could see that we respected this area over here. As I said yesterday's uh, London Open price action over here. Yeah, we trade here, so that we, we we could see a reaction. But what I don't really like. Um, and why I don't think that we are going to reverse yet is because of this gap area. Yeah? We do have a gap area over here. So I do believe that we need to revisit this gap area before we can trade lower. Yeah, before we can trade lower. So we will see. Uh, we will see what's, uh, what's going to happen. If we manage to trade lower, if we manage to trade lower, yeah, then I will be looking to buy dollar into this imbalance area. It all depends. Yeah, if we seek the imbalance area first then we can trade lower um however if we break the imbalance area uh sorry the gap area if we break the gap area then it will be just looking for a minor pullback into the gap area to then trade higher so it all depends uh, we do have the fomc meetings uh, a bit later on in this afternoon so it will all depends on what um what they will say um we yeah we, we might many many people think that we uh, that that some of the price has already has already been priced in i still believe that we will go higher on dollar but of course we have to wait what um uh, yeah what, what the charts will tell us basically so if we don't uh, if we don't trade into the gap area first and then i would like to see some bearish momentum and then we can see here some imbalance over here we then we trade high and then i would like to see some more buy uh buy volume coming in on dollar which means more sell sites uh potential for gbp uh usd and euro usd okay so we'll keep you updated guys in the in the discord hopefully this video was um was helpful uh, I, I i hope that you guys will uh look at this uh, at this way of trading as well um as I said, I don't really believe in RSI. I don't really believe in stochastics. I just like to look at the raw price action of the currency pairs and see which one is the strongest, which one is the weakest. Okay. Hey, hope uh, hope this video was useful. Again, sorry that I um, said to get out of the trades. Uh, it's just my own preference. Whenever I see that liquidity has been formed and we don't react uh, immediately from my preferred level, then I just prefer to get out of the trades. Um, better, sorry. Um, I mean, better to get out of the trade and uh, be sorry later. So, uh, okay, cool, guys. Hopefully, this was helpful. As always, uh, please reach out to me in the Discord. Um, if you're not in the Discord yet, uh, you can find the link below. 
Uh, all content is for free. Uh, the purpose of this is, of course, to make sure that we are all confident with our trading and, uh, yeah, to help each other a lot. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.